just go on your Facebook, go on your Twitter, call someone, let them know to go to AdventMingleLive.com. That's AdventMingleLive.com. And, and, and be a part of this discussion, a discussion that we've been talking about for some time, but now we want to uh, hit the rubber where the road is or hit the road where the rubber is. We, it's now time to talk about some of the, uh, the stuff that we've been going through at Church Concerning Singleness. And today, I have someone with me who uh, has been a sidekick for some time. It's, you ain't nobody's sidekick, but <laughs> have been so, a sidekick for some time. And um, it's exciting to have this individual with us. She is our host today. And I want to introduce to many of you who may not know um, uh, uh, Lala James. And so, uh, Lala, hey. it's good to have you with us today. Good to be here, good to be here. And we just want to pray before we begin. And then I want to introduce you in a, in a different way. Okay. If you don't mind. All right. And so we want to talk again. So what, we, what we're asking everyone to do at this time is to just take the time out to go to your Facebook, uh, go to your Twitter, uh, email, let someone know that we are ready to do something different. We are ready to talk today. So all those who are on Advent Mingle Live, over 100 individuals who are on adventmingle.com, we want this to be your monthly time where we come together and discuss. So let's bow our heads together as we talk a little bit about this upcoming subject. So Father, again, we come before you thanking you for being a great God to us, for being a good God to us. And so right now, Lord, we're asking that your Holy Spirit would be with us and bless us. As we talk about a subject that may be a little bit controversial, but we we're looking for your knowledge. So we're asking that you be with us and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so again, I want to thank you for joining us on Advent Mingle Live. So what is actually the subject for the night? The subject for the night simply is why are men so slow to approaching women, approaching women in the church? I don't know about the club. But in the church. <laughs> and so we want to dialogue about this. You're going to have the opportunity to also call in and uh, and be a part of this dialogue. But for those who may not know, I had the opportunity of uh, uh, hosting and, and, and having a great co-host in uh, Landy James. And she's doing some great things coming up in her life in the year 2015. Yeah. And so... Um, when we get to the middle, when we get to the middle, I'm going to introduce her by showing just a, a short video of what she's going to be doing. And it doesn't just quantify, but it qualifies her for uh, just talking and being a part of uh, this dialogue. So in this, either way, I want to start off by uh, simply saying it's good to have you here. Good to be here. It's good, okay. And, it's good to be here. Uh, I think, I don't know if we're going to agree or disagree. Or we probably agree won't or agree. We probably won't agree. We probably won't agree. But we really <laughs> want to get into this subject. And so... What is this subject all about? Well, from what you said. That's right. <laughs> That's right. From, from what you have said in the past, it's why are men at church? At church. Hesitant at church. Right. in approaching women mm -hmm. at church. At church. Um, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. I think... I think I think you should actually start answering that because you come from the male point of view. That's true. I can speak all day from the female point of view, but... I hope the guys kind of kind of plan on calling in as well. That's true. We really need them to call in because so that they can tell us, you know, why they are afraid. Okay. So here it is. So some some <laughs> months ago, some months ago, we had a singles mixer. Mm -hmm. We had a singles mixer at a friend's home. Um, when we were there, the women were just simply saying that they are there. They're also saying that they have jobs, mm -hmm. they have careers, they have education, and. It's amazing that the men they come to church and they feel as if things should be handed to them. They're just, they're just hanging. They just, or you know, or the women should just be flowing over them. And here it is now that you know it's a it's an age old question, not only in the church that uh, we go to, but in the churches all around. That it seems like there are more women than men in church. Right. So that if there is no shortage of women, then why should the men work that hard? Mm. Right. Why should the men work that hard? But it frustrates a lot of women. It frustrates a lot of men who would like a young lady, but feel like the women are pushing them off now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we want to be able to dialogue and talk about that. Why do you believe? Why do you believe so uh, that men do not do this? And I know that I probably can answer it as a man. We want to hear from the ladies. We want to hear from the men. We want to hear from uh, individuals that can talk about this and intelligently. <laughs> well, I, I, think, I think that I, I think that it's human nature. I think that when you have... A lot to choose from. Uh -huh. Now let's let's go ahead and let's go ahead and think about the typical buffet. I don't mean to 
Watch it. I'm just saying. Let's okay. let's let's talk about. You know, you have a spread in front of you. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. you're gonna take your time all evening. That's true. Right. That's true. You're gonna take your time all evening because that food ain't going nowhere and it's there. <laughs> right. Yes, yeah, true. Right. True. So potentially it could be a psychological thing where the dudes are like, you know what? They ain't going nowhere because these are church girls. You mm -hmm. know, I can go. I can go do whatever I want to do. You know, I can play here, play there, whatever. They're gonna be here. Because they're mm. church girls. Mm. So I don't need to approach. I'm just, I'm speculating. Because again, you know, this is... This is what you, you're thinking. This is what I'm thinking. Okay. I, you know, this is what I'm thinking. I think that ratio, unfortunately, places women in uh, in, a, in a bad spot, potentially. Okay. But we now recognize what the ratio is. Mm -hmm. Okay, the ratio, I believe, is 7 to 1. Something like that. So, some, that's a lot. That's, a, that's, that's yeah. like for every man, there's like 7 women in church. <laughs> yes. So why do people go to the club? They might as well go to church. <laughs> you know what? You might as well go to church and find them if the ratio is that crazy. Right. Okay. But it depends on what you want. And someone in the chat room, I think Big Zoe, just said mm -hmm. quantity does not equal quality, and that's the truth. That's true. And that's the truth. You that's you could have a whole lot of nonsense. That, that's true. And that may be why they're not approaching either. Or maybe, I don't know. Maybe they have approached women in church, and women have been so desperate Ooh. that they didn't have to work. I'm just, desperate I'm just, is, a, hey, is a hard word. Desperate is a hard word. The desperate is a very hard word. Um, eager. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Let's say eager. <laughs> if you want to say eager, you know, you just, and the woman may may have thrown themselves at women. I mean, at men. At men mm -hmm. And they may feel, and men now feel like, I don't have to work for this. Yeah. You know, I, you know. So. But, but, but you know what? I don't think, I personally don't think this is just a church problem. Okay. I, I think that, unfortunately, if you have a specific guy in mind or whatever, I think that that ratio exists even outside the church. Okay. You know, because we have men that are turning to same-sex um, relationships. Uh -huh. We have men that are in prison, incarcerated. We have men that are no good. You know, mm. and so you have women out there who are looking for a quality man and even outside the church can't find it. So what does that do for the woman, period? What does that do for her? I mean, you find women are now more aggressive. That's it. You know, okay. women are more aggressive and okay. going for what they want. Right. And and, and so in, in and out the church In and out the so church. We're just talking. We're talking in general. Right. Now. Yeah, we're talking in general okay. right now. Okay. I mean, you know, women going for what they want. So in the church, you're going to find that as well. Mm. You know, because we tend to mirror our community. So, um, right. We should. We, 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 we. In every way. In every way. <laughs> right. In every way, we should. We, we, should. we should. The same sin issue that's going on in our communities, we should be seeing it in a church because that's where the hospital is. Exactly. I got you. I'm exactly. With you. I'm with you. Exactly. Let me be the preacher, though, okay? Right. No, that's what I'm uh, just <laughs> I'm just saying, you got a lot of speaks here, so I'm right, just saying. Good, 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 good. <laughs> but, 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 so I think that, um, I, I think that this, yes, is an issue. Yeah. Um, you know, and we could probably get into this portion of it a little later. Um, what does that then do for the woman? Because we've already talked about how, briefly touched on how that, sh that is now changing the woman's approach. Okay. Okay? Okay. okay. So what does that and, do for the female? Right, and I like what you just said because we're talking about how, why men do not approach uh, women in the church. We're, we're, we're probably going to get to a place where women are saying, well, I'm no longer going to approach you. Right. You know, it's almost like you had a... Standstill. You had a standstill. You're a standoff. Just... On the opposite sides of the foyer, you know, looking mama, at each other. You know, my mama always say, my mama always say, stagnant waters stink. Oh, have mercy. Stagnant waters sit there stink. So you may have some stink situations in church because nobody's going to make the next move. Yet, we always hear of great situations in church when people do meet, when people do decide to have that conversation, when people do decide to approach someone. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we get to a point, which I know we're going to get this question, I know we, we, you got some. Uh, emails uh, this week. Uh, uh, um, you got some emails this week that talked a little bit about um, men who say they won't approach women in the church because they think that they're stuck up. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, I think the exact quote was "hoity toity." Ever heard that? Hoity toity. 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 <laughs> right. Good, good, good. Hey, yeah. You know what? Let's let's begin to open up the uh, the line. Let's open up the line. Okay. okay. So if you if you want to call in and um, talk with us, our number is three four seven. 989-8128. Again, that number is 347-989-8128 to join the conversation. Okay. And right before you do that, I just want you to know we are very excited about uh, Praise Vision. Praise Vision has powered us up for some time, and they're still powering us up now. And I want to uh, just thank them. And also, we want to th thank uh, another ministry, which is uh, 
Awesome Ministries. And Awesome Ministries is doing something really different. Uh, awesome Ministry is actually having a website which is called uh, ministrytrend.com mm -hmm. where you can put your uh, church events, your fundraisers, and more on there. I'm not sure even if, I don't, I'm not even sure you have to pay for it. I'm not sure if you have to pay for it. But if you like to get your church events or your fundraisers or whatever on, uh, uh, um, out there, you can go to ministrytrend.com. That's ministrytrend.com. In, in in light of this, let's go back to that number again yeah. so people can begin calling in. That number is what? 347-989-8128. The number is 347-989-8128. Great. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, this is a little bit scary. I'm looking at, uh, and I'm looking at how many people are on and, uh, uh, uh-huh. And, uh, yes. I'm getting nervous. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why are you getting nervous? <laughs> All right, let's go, let's go. So we want you to call in. In the meantime, when you're, while you're calling in, we, um, we really want you to know that one of the things that, uh, we have done, uh, my, my wife and I, we started a ministry which is called adventmingle.com. And at adventmingle.com, it's really about not just pairing people together, but allowing, um, but making them healthy, making individuals healthy. When I was, uh, a single person. They didn't have things in the church that, that will really build up individuals to be healthy single individuals. So I just want to give you a synopsis of what this ministry is all about. In the meantime, we're looking for you to uh, call us at, again, 347-989-8128. That's 347-989-8128. We're looking to hear from you. My name is Pastor Paul Graham, and my wife and I serve a predominantly young adult congregation and today, we want to share with you a ministry that was birthed in our hearts some time ago, a ministry called Advent Mingle. Advent Mingle is a Christian dating site geared to single men and women of all ages who are seeking to meet others who are Christians, searching for companionship, and a community for fellowship. Several singles, we were amazed to know that many Christian singles subscribe to secular dating sites. Though there were several Christian sites, we wanted to create one that would not only match individuals by their preferences, but also by their ministry. What if there could be a Christian dating site that offers resources and promotes wholesome activities without compromising standards? What if it were more than just a dating site? What if it were a tool which helps individuals become whole in Christ? This is what makes Advent Mingle unique, ministry. As a growing and fairly new ministry, we wanted to add a monthly live Q&A on our online ministry site called Advent Mingle Live, where individuals can watch or call in and be a part of the dialogue. So why the name Advent Mingle? Advent speaks to an arrival of something long awaited and also noted as a season that ends and prepares for a new beginning. Our vision is to help individuals form partnerships and help prepare them for the arrival of something long awaited, preparing them for their season, a new beginning. We recognize that many singles subscribe to sites ranging from $19 to $60 a month. Our cost is $7 a month, a number which symbolizes fullness, completion, and perfection. Join us today at Advent Mingle where your ministry and match is just one click away. All right, okay, I think we have a caller that's on the line. Uh, last four digits, three, one, Six five, welcome to Advent Mingle Live. Hello. Yes, we yes, are. we can. Um, yes. Uh, this is Donald. Okay. Hey, Paul, this is Donald. Hey, Donald, how you doing? Oh, from New York. Good to hear mm -hmm. you. Good to hear you. All right. Um, I think, well, my first thought when I heard the question is that, I mean, maybe I'm old fashioned, but maybe church isn't the place we approach women in the sense it's not a club. So in a sense, maybe the question is, is a setup for why it appears slow. I mean, church ain't a club. All right. You're not going to straight pick people up 
at church in the way if you was at a club or at a party. I mean, explain to me how a man at church should be picking up a woman. Should he be buying a drink? Should he be sipping her number? I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, slow at church means, I mean, church is church. So, so you you so you're feeling that church is not the place to, to, you know, find the one that you want to be with. No, 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 I'm not saying you can, but slow means I mean it's not a club. I mean a club you there to hook up and you, they you know do something and speed because you know you're gonna have a couple minutes there, you know, <laughs> or you ask a lady to go and dance. I mean, what you gonna ask a girl at church to go dance with you? No. So I guess I think I, mean, I think I think what I get him what I hear him saying is that that's not necessarily your primary reason for going to church. So picking somebody up picking somebody up at church may not necessarily take place, although it can happen, right? It can happen. I'm well, not going to see if that's what he's saying. I'm addressing the question. Yeah, if it's right. slow, then I mean it's not quite the space that you're going to be picking up women at the pace that seems slow to people. Okay, I, 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 let, let me let me let me put it more in perspective. Um, when you have a when you have a, a woman who is giving her life in ministry or giving herself in ministry, right. you have someone who says, "Okay, I live my life out there. I do what I need to do out there. What I wanted to do out there. Now I'm doing what I need to do to be saved." Okay, she's in church. She doesn't want to deal with the brothers outside. She doesn't want to deal with the life she lived before. So there's an expectation, there's an expectation that there are men who come to church to simply say, no, no, who come to church and are able to fellowship with a young lady and see who they want. You see where I'm coming from? Be, because if I go to, if I go, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, right, um, but I, but what we're looking at is you find a lot of women who are frustrated by saying, hey, I'm in church. I'm here. I'm in a place where I feel like I should find the love of my life, but I'm finding that a lot of men come here and then they don't approach me. And even if I approach them, they know that the ratio is seven to one. So they're the endangered species. So they don't have to work hard. They don't have to be that individual. I mean, Don, right. I mean, Don let me let ask me, you this. How many let me give another perspective on how the slowness is. Okay. Some of these women at church are already married. They not come to church with their husband. So if you're slow... You don't want to be rushing in, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in that person and I want to talk to them. So you're sort of slow because you got to find out their... Their status. Dating status. Okay. Exactly. So you ain't just going to go pick up anybody because a lot of times there's ladies who come to church by themselves for a while. So you've been watching for a while. Okay. She may have a child, or maybe she doesn't have a child. You know what I'm saying? But you think that they're single. And then when you step to them, oh, I'm married. How would I know that? You don't never come to church with nobody. Uh -huh. so, so slow is best than fast, you're saying? It's better than fast. I mean, slow is a relative... I'm just, a, I'm just, a, I'm just coming off of the slow part. Okay. I'm not saying that men may not be stepping up as they should, okay. but I know that if you rush, sometimes you'll play yourself. Oh, well, I didn't even know sister was even married. She's been coming to church by mm -hmm. herself for the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. You but, know what I'm saying? So, I, I mean, if it's slow, there may be reasons behind it. But, okay. I, but I think, though, I mean, we're negating the fact that you have conversations in church. So you get to know people as you fellowship with them in church may not necessarily be with the intention of hooking up or anything like right. that. But if there is someone and I think people are um, I think people are savvy enough to know how to have a conversation and not go straight for it. You know what I mean? Right. But if there is someone that you potentially could be interested in, right. then you have that conversation. And then in conversation, you find out whether or not she's married or not. OK. Or, or Don, let me put this. Oh, no, no. Don, let me put this to the test. Let me All put right. this to the test also. You know. Uh, we had a couple at our church that just got engaged. And he said the reason why he knew that, he told us, he said, he told us to the whole church, the reason why he knew that this person was for him is because they did ministry together. They, he didn't just get up and say, oh, this is going to be my girl or whatever. He found her attractive, but he saw that she was doing ministry and that's what attracted him even more to her. 
Now, my issue is, is that I like the, the, the I like where you're going, where you're saying, look, I ain't going to the church like it's a club. I'm trying to hook up with some babies or something like that. I'm not going to church for that reason. But in the journey of church, right. where do you stop off sometime to say, hey, this is where I want my uh, to find my wife. This is where I want my children to be blessed. This is where my journey begins um, when it comes to a family. And though I understand what you're saying, Don, I mean, I write it down. I mean, I got it. And I'm sure a lot of other people got it. I think the issue simply is for us is there are individuals who may be not like you, who sees, see, sees an opportunity, but don't seize the opportunity because they feel that, hey, I'm still looking around or I'm, I'm window shopping, though God may have got, had that, that uh, individual for them. Hey Don, thanks, thanks for that. We're gonna keep on moving. We got some other callers, but thank you. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it plain. Right. Church ain't no club, so you better slow down. I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay. All right, we have a caller with um, the last four digits. Not cut him off. Uh, the last four digits of nine zero three, nine zero seven three. Uh, welcome to Advent Mingle Live. Happy New Year, Pastor Graham, and Happy New Year, Sister James. How are you doing, both of you? Wonderful. This is Big Zell, a.k.a. Osama Iguana. Oh, yes. Oh, What's gotcha. Up? Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. 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 Oh, man. This is... Oh, wow. It's a tough one. Um, <laughs> Where can we begin, family? All right. Let's go. All right. Here we go. Um, what, you, what both of you said to the last caller was very poignant and true. And, in fact, that's what happened with a couple of uh, folks that I used to work in ministry with, how they found their spouses were. They were not looking. They were doing the work of the, of the master. Oh. And in the process, right. they were e able to find their mates. Right. Now, and there are a lot of us that come into church with that mindset that they're here to find salvation. They're here to help others. And they're also here to be blessed in the process. Now, the question is, how do you go about meeting a, a person in church? Now, the whole thing is when we're children of the light, we have to do things differently. Mm. It's not about, okay, she looks fine. She's this, she's that. I don't see a ring on her finger. Let me go holla at her. It doesn't work like that. In fact, the, the average brother has to treat it like it's a bow situation, Boaz situation, and has to wait and pray and say, okay, God, lead me to this sister. Let the right situation open up. Mm -hmm. and, let, and you have to make inquiries um, wisely. In fact, Paul, next time I'm coming by you, do you know do you know do you know my process of whenever I walk into a church how I meet people? I'm not talk I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna reach out to um introduce myself to every old person, no. Okay. If I see somebody I know, we have the beautiful blessing of the Adventist um Adventist Social Network. I'm gonna say, Pastor Pastor Grant, I know this brother from way back and I'm like, brother, who are the people that are safe to actually interact with? Because I ain't got time. Like, to be into the drama and all that. I got that you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> and no disrespect to the sisters. Um, brothers talk. Yeah. So my thing is, I ain't got time to be spending my money, my energy to be wasting time with sisters. That's not about. That's not about the kingdom, and that's also not about building a family, and that's not about actually being loved and loving. Keep it real, though. It. Keep oh, it yeah. real. So, oh, yeah. you know, the, 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 the prep work has already been laid down. In fact, I'm not even going to, I will even inquire, and it's like some of my uh, Igbo aspects that come into play, I'm going to inquire before I even step to the, before I even step to the plate. So I'm going to say, look, this is where my situation that I'll tell people in a heartbeat, I'm single. Mm -hmm. I ain't about no games, just the other blah, 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 what's good? Who do you got? <laughs> he said, he said and, who do you got? And, and it sounds corny and all that. No, 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 no. It, it doesn't. It's, it's real. It doesn't. Guess what happened? When the brothers were ready, and when the sisters were ready, that's how it got down. Right, right, right. So and then, ultimately, so, you know, between God and the individuals, they made up their minds. Uh, so what you're saying is basically that guys who are not seizing the situation are not ready. Are, are just simply not ready. They come with a mindset. Well, I'm not ready. Okay, okay, okay. No more. We got some. We got some. We got some scriptures coming up to show what readiness sounds like. All right. We got some script. And 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 I and I like that thought. I like the thought that no, I, I'm not just coming to church to find someone. Right. The first thing I'm doing is I am looking to do ministry. Right. 
I'm looking to do ministry. And then God is going to open my eyes to, you know, you know, mm -hmm. to the into the direction or the person that I need to be with. You know, I, I really don't hold on to this ratio thing. I really don't hold on to this ratio thing. Um, I really believe that who's for you is for you. Mm -hmm. I really believe that. It matters not who you're looking for or what you're looking for, but that you find God and God will help you find what you're looking for. You see where I'm coming from? That's what I totally believe. When you're coming down this way? Brother, I'm working on it, man. I'm working on it. You already know. I got stuff already down there, and I already got my people down there. I got you. But I'll talk to you about that later. You got it. You I'm got unfortunately it. not going to be able to make the mixer, the mixer, but I'm definitely coming down there because I've seen a lot of wonderful people and wonderful things that are going oh, down, wonderful, down there. Wonderful, the family. wonderful people or wonderful, <laughs> wonderful people? Well, yeah, I haven't seen no people, but I know. No, I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fans. Okay, okay, okay. Right, 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 right. I also got my sister down there. I got you. Of course, of course, of course. All right, brother. <laughs> we, we don't know what you're looking at at Facebook. All right, baby. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't do. I don't do that. I don't. I do got that. you. I'm but, going on faith because, brother, like, like I said, I mean it when I say it. The people that have the best lives are the ones that have the best faith and trust. Yeah. Got you. And it's too dangerous. Yeah. I've been through one relationship where. I, did, I dealt with a person who presented one thing, mm. right. but time and the test, it was not nothing like what they claimed it was, and it was scary. Wow, wow. Can, can you imagine? Yeah. A man a man is saying. That's, that's crazy. A man is saying. Who's I'll be honest with you. It's a lot of, no, no, and I'm not trying to slam sisters, but I've worked too hard, and I have too much to give, and I want to be married. I want to be, I want to start a family and all that, but I can't just do it with anybody. Right. You know, because if you, if you make a mistake, that you're done. Yeah, man in this country. And, I, and and coming from a, from a female, I think it is a breath of fresh air to actually hear a man say that. Because a lot of times women feel like as if though guys are just going to pick up whomever and whatever and accept whatever. You know what I mean? But to actually hear um, someone who is single, who is not ashamed to say that they are interested in finding the right person right. And, and then talk about um, the importance of that. Right, right. Of right. that decision. I think that's a breath of fresh air. And I think that single women really need to pay attention to how they present themselves and where they allow themselves to go as they try to find a husband. Wow, wow, wow. Love it. I, I, I like I like that. Lovely. I like that. Hey, thanks for calling, brother. We're gonna go to our next caller at this time. We're gonna go to our next caller at this time. <laughs> our next caller, last four digits, uh eight two five two. You are live with Advent Mingle. Good evening. Good evening. How oh, are you? It's Nelly. Hey Hey. Uh, I'm sorry, say it again, I'm sorry. It's Antonelli. Hey, how are you? How are you? Ooh, we got a lady on. <laughs> yes. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I'm doing well. Very uh, interesting to hear the men's perspective as they mm -hmm. were speaking. Mm -hmm. But as I was um, having lunch yesterday with someone, we talked about how hard is it to find someone, you know, uh, in the church and even just nowadays. And one thing he did mention was how in the event of community, it's not like a six degree separation. You it's more kidding. like a one degree separation. You ain't lying. You ain't, you ain't lying. You ain't lying. So, the, you know, the, and then also the ratio from women to men, you know, is, is also a little bit of a problem. So what happens is that if someone, the moment you post a picture on social media with someone or you dated someone, you know, right away, the men or the women like, oh, I don't want to really mess with them. Because people right away assume that you are with that person if wow. you're, right. wow. you know, if a picture appeared on social media. Uh, but I do agree that uh, with, you know, many people do happen to go to church and they get into ministries and they happen to find their mate that way, you know. So it's not really like a club thing. It's, it's uh, you go to church to meet people, to fellowship with them, and you just end up, Finding your your mate that right. way, you right. know. True, true. Right. I, I mean, and, and and even if it wasn't a mate, you know, there's some young people who find older families. There's some older families that yeah. find younger people. You you meet your best friend there. Right. You as kids, exactly. you know, you know, no matter what church you're going to, whether it's a Baptist church, whether it's a, a Pentecostal church, whether it's Seventh Day Adventist church, the fact of the matter is, you're meeting your community. You're forming community. Exactly. You're forming fellowship. And in the midst of forming fellowship and community, there's there's marriage. There's attraction. Mm -hmm. And and it uh, what's what saddens me because I hear this a lot. 
what saddens me is that there's a lot of women who are brought up, how would you say it, uh, Lala, brought up in, in a conservative manner. Right. And in that conservative mm -hmm. manner, um, though in our day, you know, now in our day, you find women who are being, who are aggressive. A lot of men don't find anything wrong with being aggressive, but then you have individuals who feel like if you're aggressive, then you're too eager. What's the other word? You're yeah. too desperate. You need to sit back and let the person come to you. Uh, women are now saying to a certain degree that chivalry is dead because, hey, why can't you approach me and say, I'd like to take you out? And just because you're taking me out doesn't mean that you're my boyfriend. Right. It's going to lead to anything. It, there's a there's a beginning steps to fellowship. You see right. where I'm coming from. Yeah. And even in our age. I do. Right. Okay. Even in our age, whether we're 30, whether we're 40, whether we're 50, whatever the age may be, I think we have a, a wild concept of what dating is. Dating doesn't cement us together. Dating, you know, yeah. it doesn't cement us together. So let me ask you a question. Uh, what is yeah. your mindset? And I was going to talk to the oh. stage as well, too, but go ahead. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. Say it again. I had to, well, I just wanted to say before you ask the question, another thing, too, is, you know, the issue with me that I, I also said in the con you know, with multiple people, because they've asked me over the years, why are you still single? And I go, you know, a lot of people like to play charades. You know, if you want to go on a date with me, you know, it's, it's best to say it. You know, not just, like, try to, you know, do gestures and then, you know, I'm supposed to guess what you want. That's mm -hmm. another thing, too. Wow. Hmm. Is that a, is that a young mindset or just an ignorant mindset? Oh. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, is it a young mindset or an ignorant mindset? You know, and the reason why I say that, a young mindset is someone who just doesn't know. An uh, ignorant mindset, usually ignorance comes out of something you don't know, but I'm, I'm using it in a term where you, you know what's up, but you're just being ignorant about it. You understand where I'm coming from? Hmm. Um, yeah, I do. I do. Okay, I do. So, so you find, I know I didn't use the word in this right context like that, but... The fact is you find a lot of men who know how to play the game in church mm -hmm. and they will play mm -hmm. the game in church because they hide behind the fact that women, this is what women are looking for, but men are not really straight up for what they're looking for. Right? Lala? Yeah, I, I, I think a lot of game playing takes place. Personally, I think that, you know, when you have people who are uh, who may be interested in one another or who may be going out on a date or whatever, um, they are not like adults having a conversation as to what it is that they're doing. You know, like we're going to dinner. Mm -hmm. What is this? You know, is this a date? Is we're just, are we just kind of just talking? Are we just chilling? You know, should I bring other people? You know, what is this? Is it just one-on-one? -on -one? Is it a group? I think that a lot of, a lot of time we spend trying to figure other people out because we don't want yeah. to have a conversation. That's right. We don't. That's right. We don't. No, we, we don't. We don't want to have a conversation. That's and, not, it's, and, not, it's not in the plan. Exactly, and we're losing. We're losing um, the art of true communication that is necessary in relationships. And I think that. Yes, like, I do agree with that. Yes, and I think that things like like Facebook and all that stuff. Like you just made a good point. You take a picture with somebody, and all these assumptions are happening. You know, and and, and so before people actually stop their assuming and just ask a question. Yeah. I'm going to ask the question because I saw this. So what are you yeah. doing? So what's going on? I think all of that, the art of communication is a loss. Is lost. And so because of that, relationships are suffering because of that lost art. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you a question, Carl. I want to ask you this question. As a woman, okay. what is your mindset? Or is there a fear concerning the seven to one ratio based on the fact that you are a woman in that kind of society? No, for me, it's not a it's not a fear for me, you know. Um, no, I don't I don't have a fear at all with that ratio. But I know, speaking to most women in my church, that ratio is real for them. You know, they don't feel like they will ever find that person for them. Mm. Um, uh, but what was the other part of your questions? Like, an no, I just want to know. I, I want to know if if there was a if there was a fear. If if did you uh, you as a woman feel that fear, knowing that hey, I walk into a church. There are there are seven hundred women and there's a hundred men. You see where I'm coming from. Um, is it is, is it a fear that you will not find what you're looking for, or what you're looking for? I don't have that problem. Okay. 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 <laughs> like like you know, real talk. I don't have like I don't fear that. You know what I'm saying? Because when a person really wants to meet you, they will they will go out their way exactly. to introduce themselves to you exactly. and really talk to you. 
That's and, true. And want to get to know you better. Mm-hmm. That's you true. know? That's the truth. I think and that's an excellent point, Carla, that you made. If a man wants to meet you and he wants to speak with you, he will find his way to you. I mean, exactly. when, when you get down to the core, we, we talk about guys not approaching this and that, whatever. There's a reason why they're not approaching. Mm. If a guy is certain and if he's confident that, you know, this is what he wants because he has already done his investigation, oh. then he is going to approach you. He is going to approach mm-hmm. you. But if you have, and I saw this in the chat room, if you have, if you're one of those church girls and you have like a bunch of girls around you and you just look like you in mess and stuff like that, no, no dude is coming to that. Say, say it one more time. That's a, that's a Lala speak statement. <laughs> No, no, I, I disagree. I disagree. You I disagree. disagree. I totally disagree on that one, Lala. Oh. Okay, no, totally come on, come on, on bring I it. I do believe, like I said, the ones who really want to get to know you, they will filter that through all of that, and they will really want to get to know you. That's and not, I can say that from experience. That, that is possible. Absolutely. Okay. That is okay. absolutely possible. But But you must also not forget the fact that Women who hang around messy women don't have a problem with mess, and some men don't want to deal oh, with yeah, that. Messy, messy women. I'm sorry, I, I missed that part. Yeah, no, no, that, then I do agree. Oh, I said yes. I said mess. Yes, I said mess. Yeah, no men want to go through that. Yeah, at, at all. Yeah, they exactly. don't want to deal with that. Yeah. They don't want to deal with that. I'm glad we're on the same page now. <laughs> hey, hey, look, thank you. Thank you so much. We have some, we have, um, some uh, more callers coming in, but thank you so much. I love thank that. Thank you, guys. I love that perspective. Thank, thank you. You too. Thank you. You too. Yeah, we do have another. Call, we do have another caller. This is an Atlanta number. Um, last four digits five nine seven five. Welcome to Advent Mingle. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey. This is Doc T from Atlanta. What's up? Oh. <laughs> ah, how are you? All is well. All Good. is well. I saw some stuff by Doc P yes, in the chat room. So did I. <laughs> Take it easy on us, please. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Talk to us. Talk I to think, us. Uh, you know, I missed it since it was, you know, uh, Martin Luther King uh, Day. Uh, I didn't have class, even though I teach a uh, domestic violence class. That's where we should have been today, but the guys opted out not to have it. So. I got to get on this call tonight, so I'm excited <laughs> to be here. We're happy you're and, here. Uh, yeah, what I what I want to say is, I think um, I had the question: Why are men slow to uh, to approach women? Maybe a better question may be: What is going on that's keeping these folks single? Mm. Wow. What is going on that's keeping them single? Now I'm not going to ask why. Because when you ask why, you have to defend that position of why. Mm. But when you say what, now you got a story. Now I can hear. Now, okay, so tell me what's going on with you. Tell me why. You ever ask that question to your kids, why, and they start defending why they wrote on the wall? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you right. say what's going on? Now you get the full story. Mm. So what's going on that's keeping these people single? Now, there's, there's some things here that we haven't addressed. I, I think the, the caller before me was talking about the degrees of separation. Uh-huh. You know, when you look at it, when you're in this Adventist circle, it's very small. Yep. Yes, yes. So if you went to Oakwood, you know who got with who and uh-huh. what happened and who did what. Let's just keep it real. Okay. So therefore, you like, mm, yo, old girl back in the day, <laughs> you know, or old boy back in the day, right, right, did no. X, Y, and Z. Can't, so you're carrying a history with you, right? Can't catch a break. Yeah, right. You can't catch and a so break. therefore, well, therefore, when these guys go out and they know that I'm on the endangered species list. You know, you're like the lion walking through the jungle. Oh, I know they want me. I know they all want me. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to pick and choose what I want to do, who I want to have. Right. Your history, your past, your past, a lot of times it's what's following you. And then you have a lot of guys who are just bringing sex to the table. That's right. That's right. And they know, they're known for that. And like my cousin said, I was hanging out with her one time, and guys were just, you know, all coming up to her and everything. And she said one time, and I'm going to keep this, you know, because I know this is a Christian uh, radio station. Hey, 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 listen, 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 man. We we need to, listen, hold on, let them hear it straight. Oh. <laughs> we, 
This is where it happens. This is not church. She said, no, no, wait. There ain't okay. no pew. Wait. There ain't no pews here. You see any pews, Lala? I see no pews. There no pews. I got Lala speaks in who speaks too quickly. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? A sign from her husband that she can right. say what she want to say. <laughs> Shoot, doctor. Come on. Okay. She told them she can get the dick when she can't get a piece of bread. Okay, wait a second. <laughs> wait. Oh, wait. 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 Okay. Wait, wait. What are you bringing? What are you bringing to the table? What are you bringing to the table? Yeah, right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody want to be me. You know them. Uh, yeah, I did. But okay, can you create a partnership with me? Right. Or are we gonna get in this thing and it's gonna be a sole proprietorship where I'm doing everything? Mm. What do you bring to the table? You see what I'm saying? Yes, and yes. so when you have when you have things like um, and, and I, I really hate this and this is not, not not nothing against the sisters, I just hate when they say this. I hate when I hear I am a strong black independent woman. What does that mean? Tell me what that means. As though everybody else is weak? Tell me what the strong black independent woman why do you have to say that? And what has happened is, is that we have gotten away from the traditional. Now, I'm not saying that women need to stay home, be barefoot and pregnant. I'm not saying that. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? My, my wife has her doctorate just like I do. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? We both do. My issue is this. You can go out there and you can be the CEO. A role to play. Oh, I got so wait, say, say it one more time. What is say. your what is your what is your role? When you come home, you still have a role to play. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. Be the CEO. Yes. Get that money, girl. But yes. when you come home, You're we're gonna right. put it in the pot and we're gonna build this That's empire. The truth. That you strong better. black woman, that strong black woman a lot of times. Here's the thing. Independent independence to women means something different to men. When they, I'm independent, I got my own car, my own house, my own money, I don't need you. That's what, that's what men uh, interpret it as. Because we just finished talking about this in my classes this past week. And I said, tell me what independence means to you. And what the men say is, independent means that you are able to do all of those things and bring it into this partnership so if something does happen to me, you can hold it down. Okay, Doc, let me ask you a question. Even he, Jesus what? felt that in the, even Jesus felt that being independent in a relationship was a sin. How do you come into a relationship, Pastor? Okay. How do you come into a relationship and you are you're not a worker what well I got my own, I'm doing my own thing. No, no, I ain't gotta ask him for nothing. Gotta, no, no, you don't have to check with him. Mm -hmm. But even the CEO check with the folk below him before he make a decision. Okay, let, let me say this, Doc. I, I, I recognize also that I spoke with a couple of men from my church. And the reason why I spoke with them, because this ministry, Advent Mingle, came out of a ministry where we saw that there were not enough healthy individuals. When you're healthy, you know how to speak with someone. When you're healthy, you know how to take rejection. Mm -hmm. Oh, you understand where I'm coming from? And I've recognized mm -hmm. some of the men have said the same thing you've said, but in, this, in the light of singleness. Cause, and and uh, in, in the light of being single. And, and this is what they said. They said, there are women, I'm going to say it and be, and be clear when I say it, is there are women... In the DMV area, mm -hmm. I'm going to say in the DMV area, who make good money, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they don't make what the person that they're approaching make, mm -hmm. because what has happened in our society is in women and single women and single men. <clears throat> I, I need to put this out there that you can close that gap of the ratio when you stop talking about uh, what you do. Okay. Yes. Are you, are you seeing stop tying from? that to your identity. Stop, exactly. exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and I, I'm trying mm -hmm. to be quiet right now. No, no, but, no, but, but, I'm, no, 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 but you're right. Yeah. Because, you know, um, a lot of us who were like, when I got, when I got married, I already had my master's. My, my wife already worked years as a nurse. When I got married to my, my, my wife, she was making thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 more than me. And when you approach a woman in church, they say, oh, that woman there, she's the lawyer. That woman there, she's a so-and-so. She has her own business. How about that woman there studies her Bible? How about that woman over there worships? How about that woman? You see where I'm coming from. So there's been men 
who have who have been slow to approaching women, not based on the ratio, but based on the fact that they believe that they're not on that person's status. Mm -hmm. You see where I'm coming from? And so many women... Absolutely. So many... So, and, and like you just said, Doc, they're individuals whose, whose wives or whose girlfriends can take up the tab. You see where I'm coming from? Or who can buy the Absolutely. nice car. You're still driving a Ford, she's driving a Mercedes. Do, you know, does that stop or hinder men from approaching women in the church or even outside the church? That answer is yes. But but let me say this. Yeah. Because not every woman okay. is wearing her degree on her sleeve. But it slows it down. It does. It slows But, slow, slow, but, okay, but sorry, when, sorry, when, when I say not every woman is wearing their degree on their sleeve or their independence on their sleeve, like I'm an independent woman and I don't need you. Not every woman is doing that. And, and so when things are found out, if a gentleman finds out stuff about this woman that he didn't know, like, I didn't know you were, you make six figures. I didn't know you do this. I okay. didn't know you do that. When I didn't present that to you, if you have an issue for, with that, then that's your own insecurities. Mm -hmm. If you have an issue with what, something that I did not present to you, which means it's not a big deal. We are still talking. We are still talking and I didn't present it to you, then that's your insecurity, sir. If I come up, I can understand if I come up to you and I say, you know, well, you know, you need to come like this because you see how I'm dressed, you see how I'm looking, you see what I'm doing, then you need to come correct. If I come to you like that, right. then I can understand that you not you not wanting to approach me. But if I don't come to you like that and I'm genuinely trying to learn you, and in learning you, you find out what I do, mm. that's mm. your insecurities. Yeah, you that ain't right. got you, nothing to do with me. Right. No, no, you're right, you're right. You're right, but she gotta be mean. I mean, I totally, totally agree with you. Yeah, I do, but she and gotta I be mean about it. I wasn't, about I wasn't it. mean. I'm just saying, not all women wear that stuff. It's true. Or not all true. women do that. So, that's no, so, they, so no, then, so then, all, all, all women, all women don't. However, thank you, thank you, sir. I thank think you. what has happened is, is over time, is that the roles people have forgotten their role. Men as well. Okay, okay. Men as well. We've forgotten our role because a lot of times I have heard. Okay, and I think some women raise their daughters to say this. Girl, get your education so you don't have to rely on a man. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. What are you getting married for then? Don't you get married to become one? Yes. Don't you rely on each other? If I met you, you know, Lala, if I met you and you were making $100,000, making thirty, i I'd be like, yo, I just came up. I'm about to get married, man. We're about to build this thing together. Right, right. Because your money is my money. My money is your money. I don't care about that. That doesn't bother me. As, as long as you're not trying to lord it over me or hold it over my head, I could care less. It's right. all in the same pot. And I'm like you, Pastor. When I met my wife, she made more than me. Sure. That ain't true now. But I'm just saying, <laughs> she made more than me. And I didn't have a problem. I didn't have a problem with that. Mm, but the mm. issue is you can't raise your daughter to say right. that and forget about tradition. I what agree. Right. What does right. independence replace tradition? You still have to come in and be a uh, mother, lover, wife, friend, nanny, yes. uh, all of those things. Because I have to do it too. Because guess what? If I don't, oh, man, that dude, sorry, man. He don't do nothing. He can I can't forget my role. I put it in terms like this to my wife. I said, listen, I said, can I have a, you know, I, I need your help. Now, when you put it out like that, hey, hey, tell me what's going on. You need my help. Okay, I need your help. Um, we're never going to get, and I put it in basketball terms. You know, uh, Michael Jordan, uh, Kobe Bryant, you know how I many rings they got? Yeah, Michael Jordan got about six rings or so. I said, we're never going to get that championship ring if you're on the bench. I need you on the floor, posting up, boxing out, passing me the ball. We're never going to get there right. if you're not helping me out. We have to. We can't have this your money, my money stuff. Right. We ain't going to get that championship win if you don't know your role. Right. I need you to play your role. That is, that is the exact, that, that, is, that, is an, that is an awesome point, Carla, because, and I can speak personally, um, because at my job, if, if you see me at work, the people that I work with think I run over my husband. The way that I, the way I drive my office, that's the, you know, they think I run over him. I'm you know, I'm recording this. You, you can record it. And he's watching too. So, yeah, right, right. so, so, but, but, but when I get, but get, when I get home, I switch now into wife and mother because I, under, I understand that number one, the man I'm married to, he ain't going for that. He ain't going for it, and, and so I have to switch 
to make sure that I am appropriately operating now in my role. And ain't nothing wrong with the role. No, no. That, that, that is biblical. There is nothing. I'm, I'm not preaching. No, no, you know, go ahead. Because you're the preacher. Go ahead, go ahead. But go there's go nothing go ahead. wrong with, with recognizing that we have roles for a reason. And you just brought up, Carla, you just brought up the perfect example of a team. Everybody can't be point guard or whatever. You know, I don't watch sports. But everybody can't do that because everyone has their own their own function on the court. So we can't all we, we cannot all be that Jordan. We cannot all be that, you know, we can't we can't all be that person. Sure. We all have to contribute for the good of the whole. So I contribute based on my role for my husband and for my children. Mm -hmm. He operates in his role. I come home, drop my check. This is for you. You do whatever. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And and that's how wow. and, and it's recorded too. Wow. I, I don't care. <laughs> but but that's how okay. that's how a team works. Now, now before we go before we go into the next caller, listen, Doc. One of the things that we've got to understand, especially for singles, mm -hmm. especially for singles, is the very fact that many times when men approach women, and we're going to take a commercial and come back, but many times when men approach women, they do not approach women thinking about the future. They don't really. They think they 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 approach. A woman, most men who don't have God on their mind, okay, who are not thinking about their future, they're thinking about the now. So, Lala, if you're thinking about the now, or Doc, if you're thinking about the now, what you thinking of? What you think? I mean, you think you're thinking of sex. Mm -hmm. You're thinking of how am I going to get this? How am I going to get this woman in my bed, or how am I going to get? But that's her? player mode, though. Yeah, but, but that's the idea. The idea is we got players in church. So so okay so you're saying you guys never move out of player role. That's that's, that, oh, that's unfortunate. That that's unfortunate because I would want to think that at some point some man would have the foresight to say, okay, I need to find a woman who can be a good wife and who can be a good mother to my children. Mm. So looking at the single women who are standing in the church line potluck right. for some haystacks because they brought cups. And ain't cook nothing for Sabbath. Stop it. I, I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> that, that's that, that's the woman I'm not gonna look at because she, she can't cook and she's not gonna feed my children. Or or, or she's not a team player. Or she's not a, or team, she's not a team player. player. <laughs> hey, go ahead, go ahead. All right, um, Carla, right. thank, thank you, thank you so much. We're gonna actually go to a commercial. You wanna go to the commercial yes, now? Exactly. We're gonna go to a commercial. Carla, thank you so much for your call. We have a few other callers on. No we want, problem. We want you guys to answer your phone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We want you guys to hold on. If you are if you are waiting to speak with us, please press one so that we know that you want to talk to it, talk with us. But in the meanwhile, we have a commercial. You know, before we uh, go to this commercial, I just would simply want to uh, just say to uh, Lala that I'm so excited about your next steps. I'm very excited about your next steps. I'm very excited about the new things that you're doing. And while we're still going back on the chat and, and, and staying on the subject that we're staying on, I just wanted to, for people to kind of understand what your next steps are going to be, where you're going as a life coach, where God has, has <sighs> taken you in 2014. Yes. And instead of you taking up our time, I got a video that we want to share with you. <laughs> All right. so, at, so at this time, just want to sit back, relax, learn a little bit more about Lala from Lala Speaks, and then we're going to move back into our subject of why men are so slow on approaching women in the church. Let's listen. Mm. Right. Let's let's listen. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's listen. Where are we? Let's let's listen. Where? I can't see. I can't see. I can't see. Okay. Lala speaks is about owning who you are. Lala speaks is about loving who you are. Lala speaks is about embracing who you are and allowing all those things to move you forward towards action. It's about loving you, knowing you, and using those tools to be a better you. 2014 was busy for Lala Speaks. We did a lot. In 2014, Lala Speaks hosted the very first beautiful photo shoot where we celebrated women of all walks of life uh, celebrating their natural tresses. We had lock lovelies and we had curly sisters. Lala Speaks had an appearance uh, in a video entitled I'm Ugly with Sunset Friday Entertainment in 2014. I also did many video blogs on several different series. One series was on toxic relationships, how to handle them, how to know it's, how to know when it's okay to walk away. Uh, I also did a video blog on boundaries, when it's okay to say no and be okay with it. Um, creating parameters around your life so you can encourage respect and discourage disrespect. 
I also met with clients. I coached clients in 2014 where I met with a busy mother who was trying to organize her life. Simple as that. I met with an individual who lost their job and who was trying to get a restart. I also mentored a few undergrad and graduate students, uh, individuals who were interested in transitioning into the career work field and uh, wanting to know the best way to do that and how to prepare themselves. So that was some of the things that Lala Speaks had going on in 2014. 2015 has started out very, very, very hectic. I will be on adventminglelive.com with Paul Graham as he tackles the subject, why are men slow in approaching the women at church? That should be interesting. And then on January 30th, I will be hosting and presenting at Getting Right Friday in Bowie, Maryland, where we'll be tackling the topic of when being real goes wrong. Hmm. And then February 20th, I will be speaking at a college in Alexandria, Virginia uh, for their Black History Month program. And then February 26th, February 26th, Lala Speaks is launching her online show. February 26th, you got to like me on Facebook to get all the information. February 26th, 2015 promises to be a good year. Uh, 2014 was a blessing. So Lala Speaks has, has stuff happened in 2015. I am a life coach. I am a motivational speaker. I am a wife and a mother and a career woman. I'm all those things. Why? Because I can be. Lala Speaks is about owning who you are. Again, we want to thank you for joining us on Advent Mingo Live. Advent Mingo Live. This is our first show. We're so excited about this. And more than that, I'm very excited about the 191 people who've been wow. with us so far. Thank wow. you so much. We have about 30 minutes left in our show. And we want to continue the dialogue of why so many men or so many men are so slow approaching women in the church. And I love the dialogue so far. But right now we want to go to our other caller. Would you introduce that, please, Landy? We do have uh, another caller. I think we lost one. Um, uh, last four digits, one, oh, last four digits, one, nine, five, one. Last four digits, one, nine, five, one. Welcome to Advent Mingle. Good evening. Hello. Hi, Hello. yes. Hi, this is um, Yasa calling from New York. New York, baby. You just had yours from Atlanta. That's this fine. is mine. Whatever. New York. That's fine. All right. Welcome to Advent Mingle Live. <laughs> Come on, talk to us. Okay, I'm calling because I've been listening to everything that people were calling in and saying. But from my experience, I see like on both sides there are issues. I believe dating is for mature people, mm -hmm. mature adults. And a lot of times the men and women, sometimes they lack maturity. They don't know how to be honest with each other. I've seen it in my own life and in the lives of my friends and church sisters and brothers. You know, a man will approach a woman and a lot of times they're not fully honest with the woman. Instead of letting the woman know, okay, I'm just, you know, I just want to see what kind of person you are because I'm looking for marriage. I want to date you, but I may want to date somebody else next week or the week after, you know, they, 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 you know, they just put up front. And then a lot of times, you know, because there's no good communication going on between the brothers and the sisters the way it should, a lot of times it doesn't work out. And then next thing you know, the brother get, you know, get a bad reputation mm -hmm. or the sister get a bad reputation. As, you know, she's crazy. She's the type of person, if you date her, she'll do this or do that. But, you know, it, I think it's because on both sides, people need to be honest with each other. You know, be truthful. If you meet a young lady and you just want to date her, get to know her, and then maybe next week you're looking at someone else, you know, let her know. Right, right, And then right. you should understand, too, because, you you know, you're not married to this man. He just wanted to go on a date with you. 
if he goes on a date with you and he spoke to you and maybe things, you know, he doesn't see you the way he thought he, you know, he was looking at you, you know, let let him have a chance to go to someone else. Don't go, you know, wow. bad talk, you know, like right. bad mouth him and say, oh, oh, yeah, he dated me or he's going to do the same thing to you. I mean, I think, I think it's both sides need to come and have a conversation mm-hmm. with each other. Right. Wow. Communication. Yeah. D- 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 yeah. I mean, both I need to come together and talk because I don't think they're understanding each other. Mm. Or uh, again, we talked about this with two callers before. Uh, understanding even the art of dating that it's not the fact that just because you go on a date, you're mine. You know? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Mind. Right. And, and, and that's what I see a lot in the church. You know, with my friends, like if this brother dated this sister. And then let's say he wants to date someone else, but that same sister will tell one of the other sisters, that, oh, well, I went out with him, and this and that happened, blah, blah, blah. And the sister will take, you know, the other sister's word, and then that brother will say, oh, yeah, she's crazy. Yeah, I went on a date with her. This is what happened. You know, and let's just badmouth each other instead of coming together and trying to understand each other. Right. Wow, wow. Wow. Right, and that goes back to the point of what I was saying before. We have lost the art of communication. Yes. Just having a real communication, just have a real talk, talk. just yes. real talk. Right. Tell me what your intentions yeah. are. Give me the opportunity to reject or accept it. Period. <laughs> just be grown about it. You know what I'm saying? You just got. You just got exactly. Yeah, and you know what? After <laughs> you my experience, you know, a brother approached me and he liked me and I liked him. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, he we started um, being friends, getting to know each other. And then he saw another sister that he was more compatible with. And then he was honest enough, you know, I think God, he was, you know, mature and we had that relationship where we were honest with each other. And he told me, and then, you know, I love him so much, I'm willing to let him, you know, you know, give this sister a chance and see what she's about. And then if things work out between them, hey, right. glory to God. We should love each other enough and have that agape love that God put in us to understand each other's needs and, and want good for each other instead of looking to tear each other apart. Hey, hey, Carla, I'm the pastor here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I okay, love that. Can I, can I, can I, no, 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 hold on. Can I ask you this? It's just, it's just, I don't want to know your name. You don't have to say your name or anything, but what church are you at? What church in New York? I didn't want to say the church either. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Then okay. people will figure out who then, I am. I got you. And you want to know something? I, I thank, thank you for being so real on that level because not a lot of women would say that, well, that person approached me. And, well, if you have to move on to someone else to know what you really want in life, then go ahead. Then go ahead. Yeah. A, a yeah. Lot of, uh, right. A lot of And I think that's what true love yeah. allows to happen. When mm. you have true love for someone, you want what's best for them. And you want them to be happy. Right. You know, and that's the love God put in us as Christians. And I think if you lack that, then you need to just pray for it. Because God said, whatever you lack, you pray about it, he'll give it to you. Right. Wow. You know, oh. and I, some of us, we lack compassion, we lack love, we lack patience, you know. Those wow. are the fruits of the Spirit. Definitely, definitely. Wow, thank you, Carla. That really... That's that's an awesome perspective. You, I mean... That was good. The was reason, good. And the reason why it's so refreshing is because a lot of people don't approach things with such an adult mindset. mindset. Yes. They're yes. still thinking yeah. like they're still thinking like children, oh well if I could deceive you, if I could make you think like this, then everything will be exactly. okay. But then when the problem Yes. Is. And then when things come crashing down, it's like, oh well, no, it wasn't really like that. And people's feelings get hurt, people get mad, yep. you wait you wasting people's time. Yep. Yep. You know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, as opposed to just being grown about it right. and saying this is what I want this is what I don't want I notice you have this I would rather not be like okay cool don't waste my time don't waste your time go ahead and, and you, you know, can respect that you know what, what what you just said also um we, uh, we and we haven't done it at our church in a long time and, mm-hmm. and maybe we haven't paid enough attention to our singles as much that when you have mixers like this you're able to let other single individuals know not like a person who's married mm-hmm. You know, because a person who's married saying that to someone who's single, they're more or less like, whatever, you're married, you right. know. But when a single person says that to a single person, say, listen, I think this is the road we need to go on. First, learn how to love. Right. 
and then we will know how to fall in love. Right. You see where I'm coming from? That's I perfect. think that makes a, I think that makes a big difference. So, Carla, I want to thank you for that. That's perfect. Your two cents made a dollar. Yes. Thank, yes. You, thank so you for the show. I think we need more conversation like this. Thank you great, so much. Great. Thank, thank you so thank much. Thank you for the call. If you, if you could just call in and let uh, Lala be the one that's here every week, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much. We're going to move on to our next caller. God bless you, here. Yeah? All right. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank God you. God bless. Yeah, our next caller, last four digits, uh, two six four one. You are live with Advent Mingle. Good evening. Hello. Oh, hit it again. Hit it again. Hit, yeah, that one. Yeah. Hello. Can you? Can, are, are you? Li you're live with Advent Mingle. Good evening. Hey, good evening, this is Ursula. Hi, hi, hi Ursula. Oh, I saw you. Ursula. I saw you in the chat room, Ursula. How you doing? This is Ursula. Hey, I'm well. You gotta remember, <laughs> and remember who Ursula was in uh, the Little Mermaid. We're you not know? talking Little Mermaid today. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, no relation. No relation. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Ursula? <laughs> hey, you know what? Uh, one thing. I, I guess it's maybe a combination of of everything that was kind of said. But one thing I want to say is this. Um, we probably heard about hurt people hurting people. That's right. And yes. if we, we've been living in a society, you know, people may talk about the things of old, but we've been living in a society for a very long time where we don't raise priests in our homes. We don't raise Proverbs right. uh -oh. 31 women uh -oh. in Come on, our Mr. homes. Uh -oh. We haven't raised those men and women for years now. And so what happens is now that we become safe, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled, uh, we kind of get to a certain age where we're we're kind of expecting these things to almost just fall in place. Mm -hmm. You know, as someone who I've been in some events for about ten years, mm -hmm. and I was raised in a Christian home, but definitely not. I didn't even know what a priest was outside of Catholicism mm -hmm. understanding. Okay, um, and, and roles, you know, roles are barely talked about. I was from, I'm from a generation where um, you have, you're taught the importance of technology, you're taught the importance of your career, you're taught the importance of, it's great that if you, you know, you get married, that's fine, but you have to stand on your own two feet because right. there, were, there are men who weren't raised to be priests, there, weren't, there are men who aren't raised to oh, well, I'm going to take care of this woman and I'm going to you know, love her and I'm going to do it the way God would have me to do, like Christ loved the church. It's hard to find good women, I'm sure, but it's definitely hard to find good men mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. understand the concept, not that they don't want to, but who understand the concept of loving your wife as Christ loves the, love church. the church. That's not easy. Even as a man who's trying to do it, I'm, I, I can talk to Great couples who they're like, look, I'm trying every day. This is a dying daily thing, and I'm, and I'm working at it every day. You know, so you take the generations of men and women who aren't being raised in, in the fear of God and his understanding, then what do you have? You know, so this isn't a spirit of, of rebellion we're dealing with. We're dealing with a lack of understanding, and the Bible lets us really perish for that. Mm. So not not to preach. <laughs> no, 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 oh no, 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 no. no. <laughs> but, let, but, let, but let me let me say let me say this. What, what I'm meeting. Go ahead, sis. Go ahead, sis. No, no, go ahead. I'm, that's what I want to make that point that we have to be long suffering with one another. We have to remember that we most of I mean, come on, Huxtable and the college and them that was a show. Mm -hmm. You know, we <laughs> we have to deal with what our reality is. And especially for the sake of two people coming, but you get these two perfect people coming together, and the truth about sin in the world, the calamity of it, comes upon their marriage. That could break them. It's like let's not keep looking for this perfection. Let's work at where we are, and where we are is in this dying world, still wanting connection, still wanting love, and things of that nature. You, you know, I wanted to say this to you that uh, we 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 are. Advent Mingle is opening up its doors now to not just Seventh-day Adventists, okay? Mm -hmm. Because the truth of the matter is we want to make sure that whether you, whatever religion you are, being healthy comes through God. You see where I'm coming from. Um, I also believe that it's important that we kind of understand if there's a difference. So I'm going to ask you this question. If And if you can't answer it, fine, you know. 
But what were some of the differences or even one difference you have found uh, being someone who have come into the church for the past 10 years and now, the difference between the men and their approach? Do you find any or do you find it's the same? What, what do you think? Are you saying like SDA men or that are Christian or saying Christian men or men SDA. against the world in comparison to Christian men? Uh, no, no. Uh, men maybe in another church based on men who, okay. who, who are Seventh-day Adventists. You know what? I find that um, <laughs> well, I think my perception of this could be a little warped okay. because it depends on your your, your geography, your, where you live. It depends on what part of the, the state you live, I think. Um, in the South, they're looking for a certain type, and in the North, they're looking for a different type. Okay. And, you know, I'm from the South. I'm from, I'm from Florida. Hey, Florida. Okay. <laughs> and, you know what? Some of the churches I went to, especially in the South, I was like, man, you know what? I can't be easy right. Mm, right. And... Um, and I'm far from being someone who, you know, from the, I guess, the confines of what is under, the understanding of being from the world. Not like that wasn't my life. I wasn't a clubber and a drinker and all, you know. But the expectations are definitely a lot different. In fact, you could probably mimic them biblically. We start thinking about the scribes and the Pharisees, not mm-hmm. trying to preach, but I just want to make a, a connection here because it became so many different levels. It became about so many different detailed things um, in comparison to um, someone who is just looking for a faithful Christian who's going to come to church. Mm. You know, <laughs> mm. it, it it became about it became about the things that weren't necessary for you to have a successful marriage. It became more about a lot of details. I'll give you an example. How about that? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. My my past relationship um, with this guy, and uh, I have natural hair, and I'm not someone who does a lot of crazy, fun- funky styles, but I am an artist, and I wanted to kind of try something with my hair, and um, when I met him, I had a little dye, a little bit, a little streaks here and there. I was a little nervous about getting that, and after I met him, I said, you know, I'm thinking about trying a little more, you know, and he gave me this whole, like, how is that glorifying God? Like, mm. How is it? Oh. How I do it? I mean, he went there. In, and I was <laughs> just like, um, okay, I can hear, I can, I can receive what you're trying to say. Let's communicate about this. Tell me some, tell me some Bible text, like, you know, tell me in the spirit of the biblical wisdom of what you're trying to, you know, really stop talking to me here. And he was going nowhere with it. And so I just thought, well, what are we talking about here? You, you leveling yeah. my, my level of righteousness or connection with God to the highlights in my hair. Mm. I, I, I didn't know what to do with that. Wow, wow. <laughs> you know, that's not what broke us up. But it was a, it was a conversation that we had. And just one of the things of like these, these unnecessary expectations. Right, right. You right. know, this wasn't going to, he made it like my highlights was going to be the gateway drug to like everything else. Oh, That's man. the, yeah. You know? Oh my goodness. I, I, and, 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 I, and I hear you. You know, I, I really appreciate the one thing that you said. I'm sorry. I appreciate everything that you said, but the one thing that you said that really made a, made, made a difference is, again, the question is, why are men so slow to approaching women in the church? Maybe because they don't know what it's like to be a priest. They don't know what right, it's like to be a priest. Right, that's the point I'm making to the question. Absolutely. About how we're being raised. Right, right. And being on suffering with the fact that we're not raised, like we're not raised in a garden of Eden. We're raised in this thing for the same world. Mm. And so, you know, for her to be fit and for her to be godly in this Proverbs, she has to expire to be the Proverbs woman, just like you have to expire to be the priest of the home. Oh, absolutely. That has to be a gradual thing that we work toward. Right. And if you're not willing to work toward it, yeah. even if you think you found that Proverbs person, like, even in, in your marriage, you have to work towards things. It's, it's all about working at it. Yeah. So, yeah. be willing to say, you know what? Yeah, I see flaws. I have flaws, too. 
and uh, we're going to work. Absolutely. We're going to put in work. That definitely. Hey, caller, thank you. We're going to take one more call. We're going to take one more call. But remember this caller. Um, remember this one Thanks, thing. Guys. I mean, thank priests, you. priests, priests, priests. We need priests. Yes. Okay. And women want priests. I, I just wanted to say her last, her last, whoever she was talking about in that example, he wasn't trying to be a priest, he was trying to be a pope. No, he was, he was trying to, he was trying, trying to be intrusive <laughs> with his preferences. That's what he was trying to do. He was trying to be her, no. he was trying to be her dad. He was trying to be her hairstylist. He was trying to, well, I got a better one. Oh. He was trying to be her god. Uh, oh, see? All right. We got time no. for that. Okay. Ooh, that was, I'm glad you took that hint, girl. I'm glad you took that hint. <laughs> Take care now. <laughs> All right. You know, one more. We got one more call and we're going to close up. Come on. Now. <laughs> All right. Now, these callers that are on, if you are online and you want to speak with us, please press one so we can know that you're not just listening. Okay. Um, if you, if you want to talk with us, press one so we can know that you're not just um, online listening. But I think I think that you know I saw a question in the chat room come up. Um, was the question ever oh, was the right. question ever answered? Mm -hmm. You know why guys are slow, um, slow to a quote. Not why guys are slow. No, whatever. Matters who you with. But why why guys are slow to approach? I think I, think I heard three things so far. Mm -hmm. I think I heard three things. If you could think of one right now, because we're gonna land the plane. Right. If you could think of one right now. Uh, Lala, what would be one of them that you heard tonight? Um, guys are slow because slow to approach. Okay. I need to work on that. Okay. Um, guys okay. are slow to approach because they themselves may not be prepared to take on the responsibility of of a priest of being the priest. Okay. So when when a guy approaches a woman in that type of manner to to make her his wife, mm -hmm. he is assuming the responsibility of a priest immediately. Okay. So some guys may feel that like they're not prepared for that. Okay. And number two, uh, what we've heard also is that uh, guys are, are, are not approaching women in the church because they feel like they are their status. I'm sorry that yeah. uh, they don't want to rush up to them and ask them what, their, what is your status or, right. you know, they want to take it slow, mm -hmm. you know, which was really good because it says then that's when at ministry becomes that link, not your approach becomes that link. But that's what Don started with this right. today, saying specifically that some men are slow to approach because they don't know the person's status and don't want to move too fast in right. that manner. Because, hey, this is not a club. This is church. Right. And we do understand that perspective. Right. And then the other point that was also made was um, guys may be slow to approach because how do you do that at church? Like, you know, right, yes. no one's coming early for Sabbath school to, like, <laughs> talk, you know. So then afterwards, now, after the appeal, do I do I come up to you after the appeal and ask you for your number? How do you do that? I mean, that's got, when someone said that, I was right. like, that's that's true. You're right. You're right. How do you how do you do that? The pastor, Pastor Graham, has just preached. Yes, yes. And yes. you have just sermon. And now you can I get your number? Mm -hmm. You know, can you really do that though? I, I, that's number one. That's, that's awkward. Okay. <laughs> that's and scary. then and then here's another situation that some men just come to uh, they are slow approaching women because they they know the ratio. Mm -hmm. They've studied the ratio. Yeah, the buffet. And, and they have the buffet. They have the buffet. Now, as you said in the beginning. And so they do not want to approach the woman or approach them in that in that sense because they feel like they need to come to them. Women need to come to them, mm -hmm. which is and that's really sad. Mm -hmm. That that there's really sad. But in light of that, those are three uh, three of the reasons. What I do like is what our sister from New York did say mm -hmm. that uh, you know not just in a summation, but when you have a person who doesn't know how to love agape love, right. Then they don't, awesome know, point. they don't know what direction to go to, and then a woman who doesn't understand agape love does do not understand feels like everything needs to be for them, which means it's selfish. I can't say, "Why don't you try that person?" But if I love you, I want you to be with the right person. Right. Okay. Right. So, um, which is really awesome. That's really awesome. And what we're gonna do is, I don't know who may be on right now who heard those four, who heard those four, uh, those four uh, points. But if someone would love to, um, who may be a member or maybe who have subscribed to Advent Mingle Live, you can go to adventmingle.com, uh, join for 30 days free, and you can hit the blog, and you can start your own blog mm -hmm. on adventmingle.com. You can start your own blog on adventmingle.com. You can also video each other and dialogue with one another on, on Advent Mingle 
uh, com and also look at some of the events. Before we go into this last caller, also want you to know that you have this opportunity, a wonderful opportunity for those who are in the DMV area to uh, come to our mixer. Just go to Advent Mingle Live, hit the events page, or like us at Advent Mingle uh, on Facebook, and you see our, our, our mixer, which is coming up on February 14th from 1030 to 1.30 a.m. We're gonna be going skating and have games and prizes and what have you. Now, we also have a wonderful uh, church that's coming down from Jersey. Well, about 45 people coming down from Jer Jersey just to enjoy that time with us. So, adventmingo.com, where your match and your ministry is just one click away. So, let's go to one more caller. Yep. And we'll close off on that one more caller. Yes, we have a caller with the last four digits of 1951. Welcome to Advent Mingo Live. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm calling back because I wanted to make another point. I hope I'm not taking somebody else's. No, you're good. No, no, no. You'll be the last you're person. You'll be the last one. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I think also brothers, they don't want to approach because they don't want the drama. You know, uh, like I was saying, you know, if I did this sister, I know I won't be able to date the next sister. So they will rather go far away to another church or they would just rather date people outside the world. That way they don't have to um, deal with the drama that goes on. Like if I did this one, you know, then that person, and then the other sisters may not want to date me and stuff like that. Mm. I think that's my opinion on this. No, I, don't, I don't think it's just opinion. It's a, it's, a, it's a good thought. It is definitely a good oh. thought. Definitely a good thought. Thank you so much. And, Thank, you. Thank you so and much. And also, I wanted to add, mm -hmm. uh, we have to think, like, we, you know, we damage each other. We have to, you know, think about, you know, each other's um, needs. And when we, you know, like, if, if a sister, hit, I mean, hurt a brother or a brother hurt a sister, it's going to affect that person, you know, next relationship. That's mm -hmm. why a lot of times, you know, we meet people, they already have baggages because, you know, somebody messed them up, right. you know, and we need to think about that. If we want to start dating and have good relationships, we need to think about each other's needs mm -hmm. and stop putting our needs first and stop being selfish because love is not selfish. That's right. Well, you need to get a blog right. going. Thank you. Just get a blog going, girl. That's some good stuff right there. Yes, thank you so hey, much for calling back I want, in. I want to thank everyone for being on this call with us. I want to especially thank Lala from Lala Speaks. No problem. When you have the opportunity, just go to Facebook and like her page, Lala Speaks. Also go to her uh, Twitter page, Lala Speaks. Some great things are going on with her um, uh, this coming 2015. Uh, I'd really like to see her back. <laughs> um, uh, but the truth of the matter is... Look out for her next show coming out February 26th. Yeah. And it's going to be exciting. Yeah. She knows exactly what she's doing because God is with her. Yeah. And in light of this, we want to thank you for joining us on Advent Mingle Live. We're so glad for our, our, our Facebook is 229 people. Nice. 229 people who have visited with yeah. us tonight. And so we're grateful and we're glad. For those who have single friends or those who just want to be a part of this fellowship, uh, we are inviting everyone, everyone who is single, to be a part of AdventMingle.com. Advent Mingle, where we talk so much about ministry and you meet one another dealing with ministry. And so I want to leave you with one of our commercials and let, letting you know that God is in the midst of your life. And what he has started with you, he will finish in you. So know this, that God is not trying to pair you up with someone. He wants you to be paired up with him. Right. So thank you for joining us on Advent Mingle. We'll see you again next month where your ministry and your match is just one click away. My name is Pastor Paul Graham, and my wife and I serve a predominantly young adult congregation and